Welcome back to Hangzhou and a magnificent view of the Hangzhou Olympic Sports Centre Gymnasium, which is where we are at the moment. The design of this complex is to reflect the movement of the Chiangtang River that flows through the centre of the city and also the city is world renowned for its silk and the flow of silk is also part of the design as well. Well, we've had a fabulous day here today and we've still got one more match to come and it features the number one seeds in the mixed doubles, Fang Yang Zhe and Wang Dong Ping. Wang Dong Ping, a former champion, up against the number four seeds, uh, Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino. Now uh, that Dichapon Puavranukro and Sapsuri Teirat Tanachai have won a match. Uh, we know that the two semi finalists were, will be the two pairs we're about to watch because even if Watanabe and Higashino were to lose in two straight games, they will have a better game difference than the other two pairs that have only won one match in the campaign. We know for certain that Fang Yang Zhe and Huang Dongping are qualified for tomorrow's semi-finals at number one position. And Watanabe and Higashino at number two. So this is basically for a bit of pride. Because by my calculations, even if Watanabe and Higashino were to win in two straight games, I think the two pairs with two wins, which is the two pairs we're going to watch, the Chinese pair would have the better game difference. Making a fourth appearance at the end of year finale. Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino. In fact, they were beaten finalists two years ago in Bali. Lost out to the pair we've just watched from Thailand. Puavara Nukro and Teirat Tanachai. Well, this will be a fourth meeting between these two pairs. And of the previous three, the Japanese pair have won two of them, but the last time they met, it was Fang Yang Zhe and Wang Dongping who won. That was in the semi-final of the Kumamoto Masters. And just look at the score in the deciding game, 24-22. They had to save two match points Black before the Chinese pair eventually receive. won. A receive to receive, who will serve, Wang to serve, my left side. So, the Japanese pair won the toss of the coin and chose to receive. Fang Yang Zhe is the tallest player in the World Tour Finals. He is 195, one centimetre higher, taller, I should say, uh, than Victor Axelson. He's only 22 years of age, born in Tianjin on the northeast coast of China. They are one place down on the, their career high of three as a combination. But as I was telling you, they were the number one seeds and therefore they had finished the year ranked one. Wang Dongping has been in two finals with her former partner Wang Yilu, with whom she won the Olympic gold medal. She will turn 29 next month, born in Meishan town in Nanan city in Fujian province and that equates to about five foot five. She has been world number one, again with her former partner, Wang Lu. What a super year they've had. Nine World Tour tournament finals, including seven titles. Won both of their matches on Wednesday against the Malaysians in two straight games, but needed three games to beat the former champions, Puava Nukro and Teirat Tanachai. Yuta Watanabe, the left-hander, is an old campaigner 
as far as the World Tour Finals is concerned, because he's been in a total of three finals, not only his mixed doubles final, he was in a couple of men's doubles finals with Hiroyuki Endo in 2018 and 19. 26, as I was saying, and they are former world number ones, currently number two on the world ranking. And of course, as far as the Japanese pair were concerned, they were the only home medalists in the a badminton competition at the Tokyo Olympics. Arisa Higoshino is a year older than her partner. She's 27 years of age from Sorachi on the island of Hokkaido. 160 equates to five foot three, not the tallest of athletes. And as far as they are concerned, uh, well, they beat Puavan and Mukro and Teirat Tanachai on Wednesday in two straight games, then lost in three games, and losing in three games is, has been very important for them because that means that regardless of today's result, they will have a better game win-loss record than the other two pairs if they lose today's match. Jesper Larsen of Denmark is our umpire for this one, and Dhiraj Gunadre from Mauritius, the service judge. The Japanese coaching bench. So the number one seeds getting this final group match underway. Oh. Yeah, that's very good work from Marisa Higashino at the front of the court. Well, it's a fourth appearance as I was telling you, by Watanabe and Higashino as a mixed doubles pair at the World Tour Finals. And if my calculations are right, and they've definitely booked their place in the semi-final tomorrow, and then that will be four, at least, semi-finals in their four appearances. That's good consistency, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, it's incredible consistency. And they have been at the, you know, the very top for quite some time now. Mind you, not quite as good consistency as Cheng Shi Wei, who has been in five previous World Tour finals in the mixed doubles discipline and has been in five finals. Yeah, I would say it's hard for anyone to compete with. Cheng Shi Wei is he's a pretty special player. He is. This follows the uh, the other three matches that they've had. We're going to have a long one. Yeah, because the other three were all three games, weren't they? Yeah, and the average time of all three, if you put them together, 79 minutes. Wow. Which is, is very long. <laughs> Just because they're so evenly matched. The pairs, you know, we're talking about two in the world and four in the world, and they would nothing between them the last time they played each other because although the Chinese did actually win, the Japanese did have match points. Two of them. Yeah. Took the Chinese three match points to win. Service over. Three, two. Well, I think that Fang Yangzhe and Wang Dongping will be very anxious to win this match. And the reason I think that is because we know who's finished top of Group B, and that is Sheng Shiwei and Wang Yaxiong. And so the two Chinese pairs will want to try and avoid each other. Yeah, if Zheng Shiwei, if they continue their form of late, I mean, 
They've almost been better and better the last two tournaments. They were so good and they've been good so far in this tournament, but no one wants to play them. When they're at their best, they're almost unbeatable. Yeah, they won their last two tournaments, didn't they, prior yeah, and to they this? they played so well, especially China Masters. They were absolutely incredible. Yeah. Oh, service fault called on Arisa Higashino. Too high. Oh. Well, when you're six foot five, that's what you can do when you a steep smash take a look at this and leapt in the air for Utah to not even get a racket on it shows how exceptional that that was because he has one of the best defenses yeah I also think that Watanabe is very astute tactically. I think he finds gaps that, you know, other players perhaps don't even think are available. Yeah, I think because he's quite different to a traditional Japanese player. Um, and I think he's... In what way? I would say traditionally some of the Japanese would play a slightly more simplistic game using maybe more physical attributes of power um, and kind of... I would agree with you, he, he's a gap finder, he's more creative. He doesn't maybe have that big power that some of the other players have, but he's got this incredible stop drop and he's got this great vision and he's so active at covering his partner and always covering the space. Nice. It's always interesting to see a player, the the coach who's coaching them is their, you know, their old partner. You've got Endo behind the court coaching yeah. Utah. The only other one I can think of at the top of my head is Wang Chi Lin. His former partner. Yeah. Who's the head coach of the men's doubles in Chinese Taipei. Chen Hong Lin. Oh. Lovely net cord, but she created her own luck there by anticipating well and taking the shuttle early as she could. Steps in really well there and just pushes it out of the tape. I would agree, creates her own luck. If you push it firmly enough at the tape, the net kind of eats the shuttle and it dips down. Expected an incredible rally. Well, it's interesting. Fang Yang Zhe immediately after that rally asking to towel down. I thought in his match yesterday against the Taipei Puravara Nukro and Teorat Tanachai, which lasted an hour and 26 minutes, I thought he was looking extremely tired. You know, I need 
need to correct myself. Seven, eight. If the Japanese pair win, they will be top of the group because there will only be two pairs that have won two matches. And when there's only two pairs on equal, it's done as a head-to-head. -head. Who won the, the match between those two pairs? It's only when there's three pairs that are equal on the number of matches won that you start looking at games won and lost, and then, if necessary, the points won and lost. So whilst the Chinese pair have definitely qualified, they might not be top of the group. There's so many permutations. I do apologise that I got that wrong, but we've been working it out all day. I think you actually got it right, Jill, just because you did say that it's really important for the Chinese to win so they don't play um, Zheng Siwei. Yeah. OK, thank you, Chris. is just fabulous badminton. This is the thing, every rally is such a hard-fought rally because no one's giving any, you know, easy chances or short lifts or bad blocks. It's taking something quite, quite impressive to get through. This is definitely where a match for the Chinese yesterday lasted nearly an hour and a half. And then today's, if it follows normal procedure and lasts a similar-ish amount of time, it's going to be a big ask tomorrow, whoever they play. Yeah. And Steen was making a very good point yesterday, I thought, about Fang yang because this is his first year on the world tour. Uh, and, you know, he's a tall athlete. He's young. He's only 22. So... Uh, for him to cope with playing so many tournaments over the years, 20 individual tournaments he's played, you know, as he's physically developing, that is, that is a lot. And whether he's able to, you know, his body has been able to cope with that, it is a tall ask. Yes, it's a, it's a lot for any player, and if you're not experienced at it, it's managing everything. Also for him now, he's you know he's a he's a major part of the Chinese team, and he's kind of appeared over the last 18 months almost from an unheard of player to now one of the best in the world as well. Dealing with that and the pressure that comes with it. Yeah, lovely angle. They're just showing his fantastic attribute that he has, the angle and the placement on this smash. So accurate. It's a risk if he gets that wrong, but that was played to absolute perfection. I do hope tomorrow that we have dedicated court attendance. Today, the court attendants are doubling up as line judges. It means we just have to wait that little bit longer for them to get back to their seat to uh, get ready to for their duties as line judging. Good rally. Oh, both went for the same shot. Brilliant 
defence. I don't believe oh, it. What a rally. Extraordinary rally. Well, if that doesn't make the play of the day, I don't know what will. That was absolutely sensational. Extraordinary rally. Extraordinary skills. has got to be the longest rally of the match so far and what a way to get us to the mid-game interval here in the opening game. Utterly brilliant. Well, it was extraordinary. How on earth did Uri Sahigashino get that one back? Full length dive and plays a nice net shot. Coach, coach. Players back on court. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Long buster. Always oh, missed it. That's just wide. Made a great move, stepped in well, took it early. Just a fraction too wide. And in this one, just too loose. Fung steps in well, though. Lovely drop. There's the disguised drop shot that you were talking about earlier on, Chris. Isn't it a beautiful shot? Yeah, so good. Haven't maybe seen quite enough of it yet. But on the other on the other hand, he hasn't really been given the chance to use it. But it shows when he does how good it is. So deceptive. Well, it only really becomes effective when opponents are afraid of the smashes. So, uh, you know, I can quite understand that maybe he's the early stages wants to use the big smash so that they're afraid of that. Oh, that's a beautiful angle. A moment of sheer magic from Wang Dongping. Skill level needed to play that is exceptionally high. Very difficult shot to play. On the move. Look at that. That's extraordinary angle. Wonderful.
Uh, it's just, ooh. Yeah, I thought it was just wide, yeah. Indeed it was. that drive serve to good effect throughout the tournament. It's one of the things I really like about Wang Dongping. She's got such good variation in everything she does. to there was just questioning his partner got called for a flick earlier in the match and he was a bit surprised that one wasn't called a fault as well well the umpire can't overrule a, a service judge see such a good crowd still here final game of the day and we're gone 11 o'clock in the evening here local time but who on earth would want to leave all this drama <laughs> lucky neck cord It was such a tight serve. Arisa Higashino tapping herself on the head as if it was uh, an unforced error. She certainly didn't want to lift the shuttle. But, uh, with a very tight serve, she didn't really have much options. Oh, that's a good smash. Across the body of Higashino. That, I think, is one of her weaknesses tends to be a little bit committed, doesn't she, Chris, on on defence, either committed to the backhand or forehand defence, and is vulnerable to smashes across the body. Especially in that situation, it was very well spotted because she was too committed to the forehand, especially on that side. If you're going to commit to anything, it's got to be more the backhand because anything across you, you're going to get yourself tangled as she did. Especially when hit it as hard as Fung does. He's got a very big smash. Well, the run of four points has come to an end. 16, 19. Really quick on that in the mid-court, Utah. That's one of his specialities, how quick he is moving forward, and especially on the mid. And then it's just a short punch action to generate the power. There was a big, big gap down the forehand side of the two Chinese players. And Arisa Higashino just overdid it. So it is four game point opportunities for the number one seeds, Fang Yangzhe and Huang Dongping. Chinese combination, Fang Yangzhe and Huang Dongping. 
21-16. 23 thrilling minutes of wonderful mixed doubles. Second game, level play. So one game to the good, the number one seeds, Fang Yang Zhe and Huang Tong Ping. My goodness me, what a excellent opening game. Service over, one luck. Just long. Over. I do Two, like that one. sort of push shot from Fran Yang Jertho. Seems to put a bit of topspin on it. defense of the Japanese but the difficult thing is with that amount of pressure they just couldn't get it away from the Chinese the Chinese weren't off balance enough and then it's just consistent relentless pressure that ends up getting through Fang 
Yeah, that's good. Now, we were talking about smashing across the body of Arisa Higashino. That a smash that time from Yuta Watanabe was slightly across the body of Huang Dongping, and that also very effective. It's so important when you're attacking, smashing, you're getting the shuttle in a downward direction, it's away from the racket, it's outside of the hips. It's outside of that area, it's so much harder for the defender to be able to fully control and dictate where they're putting it. Just wide. Great shot there from Utah, Four, stepped in. Because he takes it early, he's got all the options. Fung has to just make a very quick decision. Lovely little bit of reverse that Utah then put on it to make it deceptive to hold him, hit it down the line. her backhand side, and then the push from Higashino towards the forehand side of Wang Dongping, making her swap from backhand to forehand defense at the desired effect. I think the Japanese, there's no doubt about they have Seven, a good defense. Five. But at the moment, I would say when the Chinese are attacking, they're definitely struggling a bit more than normal to defend. And I think they have to find a way of trying to neutralize that. Fung's movement is, it's good, but if you give him time, he's exceptional. And they've got to find a way of keeping, keeping it flat by stretching him and only giving him time if there's no other option. In that scenario as well, Yuta's got to take a little bit more pace off so the shuttle's dipping before it gets to Fung. If it's still rising or if it, you can just step in and take it, he's so dangerous. attacking shots to actually break down the defence. Fabulous angle, first of all, from Frank Yangzhe. How on earth did Orisa Higashino get that back? I think this yeah. is the big thing at the moment. His attack has been quite exceptional. And they've got to implement a different strategy of a more of a no-lift strategy, only lift if it is 100% essential. Almost every time he's getting the attack and he's on balance, he's winning the point.
Oh, that's a great defensive shot. Don't believe it. How on earth did Fan Yangsha and Wang Dongping dig themselves out of trouble in that rally? Remarkable defensive play. Look at that. And then that one as well. And to turn it away. It's one each from both of them that was quite exceptional. With a three-point advantage, Fang Yangzhe and Huang Dongping having already won the opening game. But these rallies are so fast and furious, it's absolutely wonderful to watch. Well, just to remind you, if the Chinese pair win this match, then they will avoid the defending champions, Cheng Xiwei and Wang Yaxiong, in the semi-finals. Of course, all uh, semi-final places will be drawn apart from the fact that the winner of Group A will be the number one seed and the winner of Group B in each of the five disciplines will be the number two seeds, but you could draw uh, the same player or pair uh, from your group. The draw will be conducted shortly after play finishes this evening. So we won't know the semi-final lineup, but we do know that the top of Groups A and B will avoid each other in the semi-finals. wants a word with Fang Yangzhe. Okay. Oh dear. Well, she was faulted earlier for serving too high and I just wonder if that has disturbed her rhythm. So this error on that occasion. Oh my goodness me! What 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 on earth happened there? Did it bounce against Higashino's racket, or what on earth happened? I need to see that again. Obviously, well, presumably broke the strings of his racket, but what on earth happened? Thank 
Well, obviously, we're not going to see that again. Did you see what happened, Chris? It looked like it maybe hit a grommet or at the very, very bottom of his racket and the string went and it went but in a downward direction. I'm going to be honest, yeah, I don't know. But it, it bounced backwards. Yeah. It must have come off Higashino's racket. Surely she would have felt it if it come off her. It's going to be one of those mysteries that we'll never know the answer to. Oh, well, I don't think he'll win that challenge. That looked good to me. Let's have another look at it. Oh, no, I thought that was good. Well, he's challenged, so we'll wait for the instant review system to adjudicate for us, but it was clearly in. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Service over. 12, 14. Play. Play. Higashino. 13, 14. From there, just forcing him when he's below tape. Playing that shot for Arissa to be able to intercept. It was a great interception, though. doubles is the only <laughs> discipline at the World Tour Finals where Japanese players have not won a title. Won all the other four disciplines. Oh yes, that's a nice return of serve. 14, 15. Clearly in. Ambitious. But I tell you what, Chris, Fang Yang Zhe has developed a, a defensive shot, that one, where he takes it off his right hip, playing with a backhand defensive action, and he, he drives it across court, and it is absolutely magnificent. We saw it several times yesterday against Puavara Nukro and Tevat Tanachai. Yeah, when he whips that one cross, he can generate a lot of power. Uh, That's over. another service error by he, Higashino. She really has lost the rhythm on her serve, no question about it. Keeps the pressure on. Doesn't overdo it. Still a wonderful atmosphere here in this magnificent arena. Especially Utah, he has a good defense, but 
He's going, he's giving the lift away just too easily. There's no fight to try to get the attack. He, he's giving Fung just too much time on when he gets the lift. stadiums they do have yeah so like in every city they seem to have one yeah it is quite incredible as an Englishman I'm incredibly jealous of that two points away from securing top spot in group A Chinese combination 16 -19. That's one of the problems, I think, with his defensive shot that we've just been talking about. If you mistime it, it really does go haywire. Backswing's a little bit too big, which overcomplicates it, and yeah, if you catch it wrong, it could be a little bit of a mess like that one. They're not giving up the fight, are they? The Japanese bear. Yeah, that was incredible defense because Wang Dong Ping, at one stage, I thought she had them. I thought she had control of the rally at the net. Japanese did so well to get themselves out of trouble. A little bit of a miscommunication at the end between the Chinese. Fun thought Wang Dong Ping was going for it. Going to be 19 all or 2018. Huh. Nice backhand. It's going wide. And it's 19 all, and the four straight points won by the Chinese combination a moment ago is answered with four straight points by the number four seeds, Watanabe and Higashino. Points or a game point. It will be a game point. This is extraordinary. Five straight points from 15 19 adrift to a game point opportunity for Watanabe and Higashino. Yeah, it's amazing how the game's almost turned on its head. Oh, that was going wide. Yep. It's one game all. So on the run of six straight points. 21-19 confirms the umpire. One game all, 50 minutes into the match. And we will be treated to a third and deciding the game. This is the final rally and the sixth straight point 
Michael Watanabe and Iga Shina. I wonder if the Chinese pair just relaxed a little too much. Well, we'll never know. But we look forward to this thrilling and deciding day. So here we go, third and deciding game. What a thrilling day of badminton we've had here today. Goodness, what a backhand from Watanabe. In the end, to no avail, but that was the most extraordinary shot. Left-hander seemed to almost contort his body to play that across court. moment at 19-15 in the second when we thought possibly it could have ended in two games or not have been a, a classic as they've had in the past mm. and it's going to follow the same suit 53 minutes in and start the third game in the fourth straight time it's three games between these two pairs fourth time in fourth meeting it's just how evenly they are matched yeah but we're the winners here, aren't we? Because we are getting to watch some wonderful badminton. Oh, that's landed well in. That shuttle Three, seemed to hold two. up a little bit, which completely blows my theory earlier on that the shuttle was flying faster towards the far end of the court. Possible though the shuttle could have got um, not damaged but slightly fluffed, so the feathers got ruffled and it did slow down because it did seem to really, really slow down as he yeah. lifted it. And Fung did want to change it. And of course, it's entirely possible that the drift can have changed. All you need is a different door opened up in the arena. And it does feel a lot cooler than earlier. Earlier, it was incredibly warm when the stadium was absolutely packed. Fung was so quick to get back to that flick. Oh. 
He tried to put a little bit of topspin on that again, Fang Yang I think for about a game and a, a game and a half, a game and two thirds, I think Fung was playing really, really well. And just the end of that second game, he kind of got a little unraveled. And I think the start of this third, he's, his level has just dipped slightly. amazing in a, in a matter of a few rallies four or five rallies how a game can change 19 15 up and a game up playing well Japanese tweak their strategy their tactics and all of a sudden one game on six three up in the third yeah oh that's nice Four, six. I think the Japanese have really kept Wang Dong Ping out of this game she hasn't really had a chance to do much and that was an exceptional shot. Yeah, that's a gift, isn't it, really? Can't afford errors on the return of serve like that. Not in such a tight match. Lovely, lovely angle on the smash. from Fan Yang Zhe. Broken strings. Nine, seven. Only pair this year, Watanabe and Higashino, to win two S Super 750 titles. So the six titles went to five different pairs in the mixed doubles discipline. The two they won was India and Japan. Very well left. And the back level. Nine oh. Five of the last seven points. Okay. 
and nine. With Utah and Orissa, when you look at their ranking, the interesting thing is obviously their points are incredibly high. World number two at 94,795, but they do have something on of only 6,600, which is a lot lower than obviously their average. And I think that's partly to do with only 18 tournaments because Utah did get injured for a period of time where they missed out on a few tournaments. If they could progress to a final here and make such a big improvement on their world ranking points. Oh, there's that defensive drive cross court once again. Yeah, it would increase their number of points, but it wouldn't actually get them near to number one, would it? That's the thing, the gap's so big because they've been so dominant. And of course, the pair we're talking about being dominant is Sheng Shiwei and Wang Yaxiong. Ten all. Going back to Fung and his defence, that the one you've described, which is very impressive, it is. But the only thing for me is he's not hit the, the softer version. It's only the power. If he could also hit that cross fade or the cross block, I think it would make that shot even more impressive. That goes long, and it is the Chinese combination who have the advantage at the change of ends here in the third and deciding game, albeit just a one-point advantage. So 11-10 in the deciding game. Well, he was there early enough to attempt that shot, but it was an ambitious shot, even when you're there early. The thing is there, I think sometimes you think the shot has to be better than it is. All he wanted to do was outmaneuver the Chinese to try and open up a gap. Not necessarily have to win the point. Yeah, this time the good fortune with the Japanese pair. really turning into a classic, so tight. There's nothing between the two pairs.
is so tactically astute by Huang Dongping. Spots this gap, reads it really well and spots the big gap. And then the shot itself, the, it's not an incredible, as in quality shot, it's just exactly the right shot. That's what Hong Dumping, she does so well. A much flatter smash that time, and that actually deceived Higashino. Yeah, that's the thing, it's gone right by her shoulder. Yeah. As you said, very different to his normal smash, which is pretty steep. But it's interesting that it was across the body again. Really difficult place for Arissa to try and get it back. Out. Yeah, that's a service error. Fang Yang Zhe, his first. In fact, the first by either Chinese player. And this does it, remind me of the second game. Well, is this going to be decisive this time? There's only a, a four-point advantage in the second game, which they failed to convert. brave to leave that when it was that short I would have given it a thump three points away from winning this third and deciding game Point opportunities for the number one seeds, Fang Yang Zhe and Huang Dongping. Saved, but surely it's too little too late. But you just never know in our sport, do you? Well, I've seen players come back from a bigger deficit than this. Second match point for the Chinese pair. Yeah, 
Second match point, well saved. 15, 20. Well, the umpire raising his right arm after that rally, which is an indication that he wants the tournament referee. I'm not sure what on earth that was about. The play is continuing, thank goodness. have come and gone. You just feel the tension building, you can hear the crowds groaning. It's integral for the Chinese to go on the attack. so close to victory sometimes at the end you just force it got to play the rally out this time they convert and the number one seeds Fan Yangzhe and Huang Dongping will top group A their opponents will be in the semi-finals 21-17 in the deciding game. The match lasting an hour and 12 minutes. Well, what fabulous badminton we've seen today. Three of our matches in this evening's session have gone the full distance. of the group play we now know who has qualified for the semi-final stage but the draw will be done later this evening as far as the men's singles was concerned well it was a wonderful affair because in both groups we had three players who had won two matches and lost one match they had the same a game difference and therefore it came down to points difference but we now know that Xi Uchi top group A with the defending champion and four-time winner Victor Axelson in second place as far as the group B was concerned Jonathan Christie topped the group with Anna's Antonsen coming through he's a former champion of the World Tour finals as well so as far as the women's singles is concerned, well, that was a lot more straightforward. And indeed, we have the top four seeds qualified for the semi-final stage. Anne Se Young, Tai Su Ying, Carolina Marin, and Chen Wu Fei. A men's doubles, well, two Chinese pairs came through a group A and the defending champions came through without dropping a match, so they're looking in tremendous form. 
As far as Group B was concerned, the former world number ones, Alfian and Ardianto, uh, they came through. So did the reigning world champions, Kang and Sio. Uh, they're through as well, just pipping the Danes at the final stage. Women's doubles, well, sadly, we lost Matsumoto and Nagahara, and therefore their results earlier on in the tournament didn't count. Chen Ching Cheng and Jia Yi Fan uh, had won both of their matches, and therefore it was a straight playoff between second Chinese pair, Liu and Tang, and Rahayu and Ramadanti, and it was the Chinese pair that came through that earlier today. As far as the mixed doubles is concerned, well, as we've just seen in Group A, uh, Fang Yanche and Wang Dongping, and Yuta Watanabe and Larissa Hugo Shino qualify. And the two finalists from the World Championships earlier this year qualify from Group B. Well, it's been a wonderful a group play. We've seen drama, excitement, upsets, and the most wonderful, athletic, dynamic badminton imaginable. We started with eight of the best in each of the five disciplines. We are now down to the best four. There's no more second chances from semi-final stage as there was in the group stage. If you lose tomorrow, you're out. Semi-final day should be a great day. It's two sessions as it has been today. The first session at 10 a.m. local time, that's 0200 GMT. Second session, Chris and I will be back for that at 5 p.m. local time, 0900 GMT. From all of us here, and especially from Chris Langridge and myself, Jill Clark, we'll see you for semi-finals tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>